Peugeot's second generation 2008 is a small SUV that offers an arguably more sophisticated take on the kind of little urban crossover style design popularised by cars like Nissan's Duke. Super mini based, it offers all the advantages of that compact runabout you were thinking of, together with the kind of added space, style and light off-road drivability you probably never expected to be able to enjoy on a small car budget. This Mark II design gets a new platform, a fresh look and a completely redesigned interior, all of it targeting what the brand hopes will be a younger buyer. There's an all-electric version too. There's lots of interest here, whether you choose a combustion engine version of this Peugeot or the all-electric E2008 that we're trying here today. Uh, immediately taking your attention will be the unusual i-cockpit dash setup that Peugeot has been challenging convention with for some time now. Now this requires the curious need to view the instrument dials above the rim of this tiny steering wheel here rather than through the wheel spokes. Now once you've adapted to that, uh, rather more adjustment is needed uh, in order to get yourself familiar with the clever 3D digital instrument cluster which all but the entry level 2008 models feature. Now this is meant to improve your reaction times but initially it'll probably have the opposite effect. Once all of this has become familiar and the miles begin to flick by, there are a few other things you'll notice. Uh, the slightly higher and more commanding driving position, and that's not always a given with a small SUV these days. And on the lower spec or mid-range models, the relatively supple fluid ride quality, although that does become uh, more brittle if you have a top variant like this one riding on larger 18-inch rims. At this point, you're probably going to want to know a bit more about your various powertrain choices, petrol, diesel or electric, uh, which Persia wants you to select between in the same way that you choose a trim level. Most will want the 1.2 litre PureTech turbo petrol variant, specifically probably the PureTech 100 derivative. That's offered only with a six-speed manual transmission and it's capable of up to 52 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and up to 125 grams per kilometre of CO2. If you want auto transmission, an E88 8-speed unit, you'll need to specify this engine in one of its more powerful 130 or 155 HP guises. Uh, there's also a blue HDI 100 diesel too. Here though, we've chosen to try the all-electric E2008 variant we mentioned earlier. This mates a 100 kilowatt electric motor putting out 136 bhp to a 50 kilowatt hour lithium-ion battery, which when it's fully charged is capable of giving this E2008 a WLTP rated driving range of up to 206 miles. Recharging, that takes seven and a half hours from a seven kilowatt garage wall box. This second generation 2008 had what its predecessor lacked, a real sense of stylistic identity. Here, designer Gilles Vidal has evolved the shape of his second generation 208 Super Mini into that of a bold, robust and confident SUV. If you want this car, it'll be because you think it really stands out. And you'll be right. As with the 208, the front end is probably the most immediately arresting part of the design uh, with these distinctive LED corner fangs that flow up into the three-claw LED headlight signature. Look further up and you'll note the paired back windscreen which makes the carved bonnet more horizontal. At the rear, the avant-garde theme continues with exact design and tautly drawn shaping. Uh, the 3D tail lamps again feature that three-claw signature and are linked by a black band running the width of the boot lid, emphasising this second-generation 2008 model's extra width. From the side, an owner of the previous model might particularly notice the increase in size here. At 4.3 metres long, this second generation design is a significant 15 centimetres longer than its predecessor, which now makes this super mini derived Peugeot longer than a Volkswagen Golf. Uh, there is also plenty in this muscular profile to catch the eye with a high belt line, various repeating triangular lines and lots of intricate surfacing that must have made the uh, panel pressing a real technical feat. Wheel sizes on the mainstream variants are either 16 or 17 inches, but top versions, which are recognisable by their diamond black roof colouring, feature these bigger diamond cut 18 inch rims. 
Well, it certainly has a very futuristic feel and one of very high perceived quality thanks to this two-tier fascia layout with its smart carbon-trimmed concave inner section which curls around the edge of the cabin and onto the doors. Predictably, you sit a fraction higher than you would in a 208, not always a given in the design of small SUVs these days. And as with the original 2008 model, this cabin champions Peugeot's unique so-called i-cockpit format, where you view the instrument binnacle over the top of a tiny steering wheel rather than conventionally through the wheel spokes. Here, though, the concept has been further developed with the addition of this 3D instrument binnacle display. Now, this sees uh, critical information uh, like speed and navigational instructions projected in hologram form from the inner roof of the binnacle onto a piece of slanted perspex in the foreground. Uh, other secondary stuff uh, features on a screen that's set further back and a button on the left of the steering wheel here allows you to differently format the whole setup uh, according to your personal preferences. More media technology sits to your left in the form of the usual centre dash touchscreen display which at the base of the range is 7 inches in size for 2008 buyers but in plosher models is offered in this larger 10 inch form that we have here. Either way, the monitor includes plenty of functions, too many in fact, because you have to use this display to operate all the climate control functions. And that means you have to switch out of whatever you're looking at every time you want to change temperature or fan speed. Uh, at least these seven stylized piano style keys just below the monitor look rather nice. Uh, they're positioned in front of a row of touch sensitive shortcut buttons just behind. The seats, uh, they're reasonably comfortable. Uh, there's really not much wrong with the ergonomics at all. Uh, there's a reasonable amount of cabin storage space and there are also plenty of media connectivity points. Take a pew on this rear seat and you'll find it's a lot less pokey than is the case in the 208, not only due to this SUV's extra roof height, but also because legroom is ample by class standards, and that's helped by a 65mm wheelbase length increase over the equivalent Super Mini model. Not so good is the relative narrowness of the cabin, which would mean that a trio of adults back here would need to be on very friendly terms indeed. But then, how often would you really cram five adults into a car of this size? Finally, let's take a look in the boot, which is 434 litres in size. That's 12 litres bigger than the previous generation model and 123 litres larger than the trunk you'll get in a 208. Uh, that's a capacity figure that remains about average by class standards. Uh, once the seats are folded, there's 1467 litres of capacity when you load up to the roof. This second generation 2008 certainly makes a more overt style statement than before with a design-led appeal that offers something refreshingly different in the class. If you're the kind of person who appreciates that sort of thing, uh, then nothing else in this segment will satisfy you in quite the same way. As with most models of this kind, on paper, the advantage of being offered over a standard Super Mini in space, styling and potential driving flexibility appear at first glance to be small. In practice, though, they add up to a car that feels a far more rounded and more complete family tool. Of course, as we've just mentioned, there are things that Peugeot still could improve. Not everyone likes the unusual i-cockpit steering wheel and instrument setup, for example. We think, though, that this car needs design innovations of that sort. Models of this kind ought to be fashionable, innovative, and just a little controversial. If that's what you want in this segment, then you probably need to try this car.